1957, a man named Harvey Gladman moved from Colorado to Los Angeles, California, where he would begin his reign of terror. After moving to Los Angeles, Gladman would contact local models pretending to work for multiple magazine companies. He would then lure the women back to his house where he would tie them up, violate them, and take pictures of them in helpless positions before torturing and strangling the women to death and dumping their corpse in the desert. Gladman brutally murdered three women, and while attempting to kidnap his fourth victim, he was spotted by a police officer who arrested him, and this is when he confessed to all his murders. And Harvey Gladman was eventually charged with three counts of first-degree murder and kidnapping, and was sentenced to death and executed by gas chamber in 1959. In the late 1980s, a serial killer named Robert Padella would convince young men to come back to his apartment, and after successfully getting them into his apartment, he would drug the young men before tying them to his bed and injecting them with a strong tranquilizer so that they couldn't move. Robert also liked to take pictures of his helpless victims before he tortured the men sometimes for days, before ultimately killing them, dismembering them, and throwing their remains in the trash. You're sitting here as a man who's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. You've confessed to murder of six young men in this city and crimes that uh, horrified the city and much of the country. You've confessed to, in various degrees, felonious restraint, drugging people, sexually abusing them, torturing them, killing them, dismembering them. I treated them as something less than human. It's nothing more than a play toy or not a play object. Your prosecutors, and I do want to quote this, when you came to plead, called your crimes wantonly vile, horrible, or inhuman. Without the legalism, would you agree that those crimes are wantonly vile or inhuman? I won't disagree. It seems to me that you're suggesting that had the police done their job, had they followed the leads, had they really been on your case prior to April 2nd, 1988, they would have caught you and some of the suffering could have maybe, been prevented. Maybe not caught me, scared me off maybe, prevented things from happening after how, definitely. In a way, do you wish they had? Yes. Bradella was finally arrested after one of his victims managed to escape, and four years into his life sentence, Bradella died of a heart attack in his prison cell on October 8, 1992. During the 1970s in Orange County, California, a sadistic man named Ronnie Alcala seduced women back to his apartment by offering to take professional photos of them, and once the women were at his apartment, he would take their pictures, but afterwards he would sexually violate them and strangle them to the point of unconsciousness and once they woke up he would repeat the process until they eventually died from asphyxiation and in the middle of his murder spree Alcala took the time out to be a contestant on a television game show called The Dating Game. Okay and we're gonna start by having him say hello to you and see how they sound. Number one would you say hello to Cheryl please? We're gonna have a great time together Cheryl. Okay and here we go. Bachelor number one. Yes. What's your best time? The best time is at night, nighttime. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because that's the only time there is. The only time? What's wrong with the uh, morning, afternoon? Well, they're okay, but nighttime's when it really gets good. Then you're really ready. <laughs> I'm a drama teacher, and I'm going to audition each of you for my private class. Bachelor number one. You're a dirty old man. Take it. Oh, come on, over here. <laughs> oh, honey, we ought to go out and boogie. Really? A bachelor number one. I am serving you for dinner. Oh. What are you called? And. What do you look like? I'm called the banana, and I look really good. Uh, can you be a little more descriptive? Peel me. <laughs> Later, that. 
after lunch. Later. <laughs> you heard from the bachelors. You got some great dramatic presentations, some good answers. But now I'm going to ask you a question. Will that date be bachelor number one, bachelor number two, or bachelor number three? Who gets the date? Well, I like bananas, so I'll take one. Number one, bachelor number one. All right. Rodney Alcala, who was wanted by police, was eventually arrested on July 24th, 1979, and he was eventually charged with five counts of murder and sentenced to the death penalty, but he ended up dying of natural causes in prison on July 24th, 2021. On February 1st, 2012, in Anchorage, Alaska, an 18-year-old woman named Samantha Koenig was at her job working as a barista. And this is when she was held at gunpoint and kidnapped by a man named Israel Keys. Keys took Samantha to his house and locked her in his tool shed for hours before sexually violating and strangling her to death. And after Samantha's parents, along with police, started a search for their daughter, Keys used this as an opportunity to make money and decided to sew the eyelids of the deceased woman open to make it look like she was still alive. He then texted her boyfriend the disturbing picture from the phone, claiming that if her parents deposited $30,000 into his account, she would be unharmed. Samantha's parents quickly paid the money, but what they didn't know is that Samantha was already dead. And after being pulled over by police for speeding a month after the kidnapping and murder, police searched Key's car and found Samantha's phone and debit card, causing him to be arrested and confessed to killing the 18-year-old. And while being held in jail awaiting his trial, Keyes ended up taking his own life by suffocating himself on December 2, 2012. On April 21, 1988, in New Mexico, a nine-year-old boy named Michael Henley went missing while camping with his father. And on September 20, 1988, a 19-year-old woman named Tara Calico went missing while riding her bike. And a year after the two went missing, a disturbing Polaroid picture of what appeared to be the two missing people tied up was found in a park. But to this day, no suspect has been caught for the abductions. And what exactly happened to both Michael and Tara is still unknown.